Okay, this is better. Welcome home. We're very lucky. Each of us individually is very lucky because everyone other than you, every single person besides you, is a sheep that doesn't know how to understand things and a bigot. Everybody besides you is a bigot. Everybody besides you is a propagandist and believes fake news. And everybody else besides you is rewriting history. Luckily, you're the one that understands what's going on. And everybody else is wrong. This is what the parable of Jesus is talking about today. And we're living it really well today. We're doing a really good job. When Jesus says, the men of this generation, he's talking about his own. But I think we're doing a much better job today than they were doing in Jesus' time. Let's look at this parable. It's very interesting. To what shall I compare the men of this generation? Nothing new, though. We're really good at it, but we didn't invent it. What are they like? They're like children. So it's something very childish that we're doing when we live that way. Sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We piped to you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not weep. One group is saying that to the other, and then the other group is saying the same thing back. And everybody is blaming everybody else and saying, you're wrong, what you're doing is not right, and I am. And nobody is even trying to see maybe the other guy has a point. Not even trying. And the way we, we make that so easy for ourselves is just give them a name. And the second I call somebody a sheep or a bigot or fake news or propaganda, then my job, my brain can turn off and I don't have to think anymore because I gave somebody else this name. We're really good at that today. But Jesus knew about it too. Now let's look a little bit more cl closely. We piped to you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not weep. It's not just you're wrong in what you're doing. That's not the complaint. The complaint is you're not doing what I want you to do. You care about different things than I care about. And that's what's causing me to complain about you. You're bad because you're not obeying me. And your concerns are different from my concerns. And because of that, I get to complain. Now there's something that's very subtle here that's happening. What Jesus' sermon is about is complaining. What, it, what this parable is about is complaining. But complaining is different than what's mentioned inside the parable. Inside the parable, there's dancing and there's weeping. There's joy and there's sadness. And those are things that are a part of life. Joy and feeling joy, when, when it's right to feel joyful, is a good thing that's part of life. And sadness and weeping, when it's right to feel sadness and weeping, is appropriate. But joy and sadness are not the same as complaining. And especially complaining in this kind of bitter way about everybody else and how bad everybody else is. Because they're not doing what I want them to do. John the Baptist came eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you say he has a demon. He's crazy. Okay, John the Baptist was fasting a lot, and people called him crazy. And Jesus came, and he didn't fast as much as John the Baptist. Okay, you think that would make the people happy? Nope, the same exact people said, oh, look at this guy eating and drinking. What will make you happy? Can you, can you name it? Can you state what you want? And I'm, not, I'm speaking to myself too. Not just you guys, please do this too. Okay. We can't. And can, it's, it's, it becomes this kind of constant confusion when we put ourselves in the center. I get to play the song. And if I play a happy song and everybody around me doesn't dance, then they're at fault. And if I play a sad song and everybody around me doesn't immediately drop what they're doing and cry with me, then they're at fault. 
And it's not that they're disagreeing with me. God forbid somebody actually disagrees with you. That's a whole different story. All of this complaining happens when somebody doesn't immediately just jump and do what you want them to do. Because they're doing other things. God forbid somebody says, maybe you're wrong. And what your concerns are, are not exactly perfect. Then I can't even imagine what would happen. But who plays the song? What are we supposed to do? What's the point of the parable? The point of the parable is the wisdom, the, the children of wisdom, not the children of the marketplace, understand that the world is not a mall where they get to go and get whatever they want. And when they don't get what they want, they get to complain. That is not the world. The world is not your mall. You do not get to play the song that the world dances to. God plays the song. And we don't get to complain. Our job is to listen. And when God plays a song that is happy, we rejoice. And when God plays a song that is sad, we weep. And our job is to listen, not to dictate. And sometimes the song that we hear requires us to weep. And maybe the, some of the things that are happening today need us to weep. And sometimes the song asks us to rejoice and to dance. And our job as Christians, as sons and daughters of wisdom, is to be listeners and to respond to what the world is asking us to do and what God is asking us to do. And so if we expect the world to be a different place and to be a better place than it is, we can't just keep pointing and saying, yeah, the world will be a great place once everybody else changes. Maybe I have to change first. And we, the church, have to be models of listening and of being open to the will of God and of responding to that with open hearts. Amen.